So here I'm just rigging up a big old show. And I can throw it up here where the shade is. Because a lot of times those fish, they just tuck right up underneath there. The key though is they gotta be floating. That way they can tuck back in there. Oh, that little guy came over and just roasted it. If you, have a, if you have a couple tough days in a row, um, it's just fun to catch some fish. <laughs> I am not picky right now, because you can go for hours without a bite, that's not fun, so. If you hit that shade edge right there, you gotta just feed it line and let it sink down underneath that little, that little edge. If those fish are tucked under, up underneath there, it gives them a little time to swim out and actually get the bait. Oh, that one came flying out from underneath there. Oh, you can see how dark that one is. He's been under there for a while. They start to get that dark black. They're not getting a whole lot of sun. They're tucked up underneath the junk. That's a good sign. If there's fish that are just using that as their home base and they're tucked under there, I can just keep firing that right to the edge and picking off some fish. Came flying out from underneath there. Get the talons down. Oh, that was awesome. That black shadow came just screaming out. Look at that one. Oh, yes. That's an excellent sign. We've got a mile of this type of short of fish. Oh man, when they're in that mood where they see it and they just come flying out from underneath that little shade pocket. That is crazy cool. So we're fishing post-spawn fish, but a couple of these actually have bellies that look like they haven't spawned yet. Which could be a late wave of fish. But what we're focusing on is shady cattails that are actually floating free from the bottom. And there's about a foot of water underneath there, maybe not even that much. But it's absolutely enough water for those fish to get tucked up underneath there. And it's mossy on the bottom, so there's not much lure choice. I just have this big ocho on a five odd hook. And all I'm doing is pitching it up to that edge and letting it sink. And so far the fish that are hitting it, they're blasting out from underneath there and nailing it. All you see is a black shadow come just screaming out to get the bait. What that tells me is I can kind of cover this fast, cast in front of the boat a little ways, and as long as I get close to that edge, if there's a fish there, they're gonna come ripping out to grab the bait. I'm using 40 pound braid, a seven foot custom rod I made. It's a medium heavy action. And I put a short little liter of fluorocarbon, 20 pound, right in front of here. So right here it starts to look a little better again. You got more of a, a shadow on that edge. They love to tuck right into where that shadow is. Nose out and they're ready to pounce on something that comes in their space. One thing that's hard too is if you see them come flying out of there and hit it, it's really easy to get excited and set the hook too quick. 
So you gotta just let them chomp it. And a lot of times what they do is they turn to go back under there and hide and eat it. So as soon as they turn, then you just lift up on them and the hook goes right in. in the pads. Oh, that's a good one. So he wasn't underneath the cattails. He was in the pads. So there's a little bit of a mix going on here. Great quality fish so far though. That's super fun. Again, just a missile launcher. They see it, they're tucked up under there. They grab it and they spin around and try to get out of there and back under as fast as they possibly can. Look at that black color on those. Super fun way to catch them. Perfect shade pockets. There. <laughs> Holy smokes, is that fun? This is like hand to hand combat. You're literally 10 to 15 feet away from some of these nice fish. And sometimes they don't dart out to grab it. Sometimes all of a sudden your line just sucks tight and they just vacuum it and start backing underneath it right away. It can be hard to get a good hook set when they do that. Oh shoot, dang it. I took my eye off my line for just a second and that fish sucked it and started pulling me tight underneath there and ripped the ocho right off. The good thing is, is they feel protected under there. So let's rig up again, throw back in there and be ready. been living. Get that talon down to hold us. Oh, what a super fun bite today. Especially when it's been a really tough week or two. The post-spawn funk to be able to go up shallow and hand-to-hand -hand combat these nice ones. Just slowly creeping along and just hitting every single little pocket or shade spot. It's that simple.
Not the right one. There's four nice ones that came out of there right when I saw this dugout channel. Oh, there they are, the one. Not giants, but really nice fish. Be fun to set the hook on one. Okay, there they are on front. There he ate it. Got one. Oh, there's two more just like that. Oh, look at that. Right in front of the boat. <laughs> yes. Saw a little ditch here. Put the talons down and saw the fish. Let them get used to me a little bit. They were only out in front of me about 25 feet. Look at that. I casted the ocho out in front, let it sink slow and I could see the two go right for it. Oh, beautiful fish. There he ate it. Oh, right underneath there. <laughs> if you want a super fun bite, look for some floating cattail bogs, get some plastic stick baits, <laughs> some heavy line, good rod and fish that shade line and make sure you got a good pair of glasses because these fish here, they're coming out from underneath there and they're swimming around and you gotta be able to see those cues so you know that there's fish there.